Now that we have learned how to balance chemical equations, and we know that these chemical equations are a representation of chemical reactions that take place, we are ready to start looking at different types of chemical reactions. So we're starting a series of different types. The first one will be called a precipitation reaction. But we cannot look at the reaction until we first examine how to determine if an ionic compound is soluble or not. This is what drives precipitation reactions. So what do we mean by soluble? If this ionic compound is soluble in water, we say that it's soluble. If it is insoluble, that means it does not dissolve in water. In order to determine whether an ionic compound is soluble or insoluble in water, we have to learn some rules. We call these solubility rules. Now I will give you the list and they are in your notes, um, but you always want to compare this list to what's in the concept to memorize list because um, it has changed from time to time and I'm recording this right now where it matches the concept to memorize list, but the concept to memorize list is always the end all be all list. This list is not easy. There is no simple mnemonic or a song that I can lead you to because depending upon your source of this list, they might include some ions here that aren't inclu included in this list and coming up with the perfect mnemonic is, is challenging. And every semester I have to revisit this list to pull it back forward into the forefront of my mind, at least some of them. Some of them are stuck and they're permanent in my long-term memory, but some I have to keep working to bring forward. Now, when we say that a compound is insoluble, even a tiny amount will always dissolve. Now, this might be down in the parts per million, parts per billion, parts per trillion level, very low concentrations. We will talk about these tiny amounts when we get into general chemistry two towards the end when we talk about insoluble salts and a certain equilibrium that takes place with them. Okay, so here are the solubility rules. The first list I have is of the compounds that you would know that are soluble, okay? Um, so what you want to do is you want to memorize what's on the left, alkali metals. Now I've listed what the alkali metals are, but you wouldn't have to memorize them individually. If you, and you always will have a periodic table, if you learn that alkali metals are soluble, you've got that list. And then the ammonium ion as well. These are cations that are soluble with no exceptions. Now what does that mean? It doesn't matter what the anion is that's connected to that cation. Remember, ionic compounds are a cation and an anion together. It doesn't matter what the anion is. If it's on this list, it will always be soluble. The next set are things that are always soluble and they're giving you some anions here. Okay, so you've got four anions that if they are on this list, they are always soluble with no exceptions. Then I've got two additional categories, your hal halides. These are your halogens as anions, chloride, bromide, iodide. Notice it doesn't include fluoride, it's chloride, bromide, and iodide. These three generally are soluble. Now I use the word generally because there are these three exceptions. So you have to learn the exceptions as well as the rule. Sulfate ions, sulfate ions can't be included up here. They have those three, but in addition, they have a few more. So you have to learn which ones are the exceptions of the sulfate ion. And that is where, for me, it gets challenging, is to remember which one of these ions are the exceptions. Then we go to the insoluble compounds. When we learn these, these are the guys who are generally insoluble. So if you run across these anions, you would say, huh, probably is insoluble, but you look for the exceptions. Of course, these have to be the exceptions. Why? Because we learned that these are soluble with no exceptions. So if these anions are connected to one of these cations, it will be soluble, otherwise it won't be. The hydroxides, um, they have a few additional exceptions. So you have your alkali metals like you had up here but you have barium, calcium, and strontium. The strontium is slightly soluble, but um, uh, not very. Now, why did they not include ammonium down here? It's, those are no exceptions. Well, there is no ionic compound that you can pull off a shelf and dump in water that's called ammonium hydroxide. That solid does not exist. 
You can make ammonium hydroxide, but dissolving ammonia, NH3, into water, it forms ammonium hydroxide um, in that, but you would not run across an ionic compound called ammonium hydroxide sitting on a shelf waiting to be picked up. So those are the rules that you're going to commit to memory. Now let's practice using them. First question here, which one of these ions lead to an ionic compound which are always soluble, no exceptions? Stop and find it. All right, hopefully you picked C. All right, the others have exceptions. Actually, there's no rule for our iron at all, but we run through those lists and we find that the potassium has no exceptions. Here it is. Always soluble, no exceptions. The next one, we've got a cation and an ionic. So we've got our ionic compound. We're going to decide whether this is soluble or insoluble. Stop, look at your rules and determine it. Well, did you say it was insoluble? If so, great. If not, let's make sure we understand how to use the rules. We're going to look for either silver or sulfate on the left-hand side. We're looking for a rule. Don't start over here with the exception. Start with a rule. So I'm reading through these, looking for something about silver or sulfate, and I find sulfate right here. So I expect that it would be soluble unless it's hooked up to one of these cations, and that's what we had. We had the silver cation connected to the sulfate anion. That means it's an exception to being soluble. That makes it insoluble. Let's look at this one. Stop, look at your rules, and determine whether it's soluble or insoluble. This one is soluble. You have one of two ways to figure that out. For me, I have very stuck in my brain that Li, a 1A metal, is always soluble, no exception. So I would have picked that. Here it is. Lithium, no exceptions. But let's say I was looking through that and I didn't notice it. I didn't see it there. And I come down and I see, wait a minute, here is sulfide. That's supposed to be insoluble. But let me look at the exceptions. Oh yeah, it's connected to the lithium. Therefore, it has to be an exception to being insoluble. That makes it soluble. All right, stop and choose this one. It's soluble. It is on the list of soluble, no exceptions. You see it there? Nitrate, nitrate, soluble, no exceptions. So I find that nitrate. There's no lead on this side. I don't need to worry about the lead. And this is your last one, silver chloride. Stop and decide. Well, I hope you said insoluble. We find that the chloride should be soluble, but we see that silver is the exception. So that's how you use those rules. You have to commit them to memory. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time to do that. And then when you're given an ionic compound, try to find one of those ions on the left-hand side. Look through that left-hand side. I guess for you that's over here. Look through that left-hand side. Decide whether or not it's on that list. And once you find it, see if the other ion attached is in one of the exceptions or not. And then you can make your determination. Okay, so we learn how to determine if a compound is soluble or insoluble. These are ionic compounds because this is going to help us come up with the products of our first type of reaction that we need to know, and that's the precipitation reaction.